Uh, hi all, uh, welcome to this session on commodity derivatives and risk management and uh, if you recall uh, we were discussing about different aspect of uh, uh, this index creation that is a threat index creation and uh, rep uh, reported uh, which gets reported by the uh, Baltic exchange and if you recall uh, we discussed uh, these uh, different indices and uh, I was discussing about the cape size index detail and this as you I mean as you if you can recall this we discussed that uh, for a particular uh, index you will have different routes which has been identified by the index committee and besides the routes uh, the actual price quotation that is the rate at which uh, shippers and charterers are renting out the uh, uh, ships in these uh, you know in these routes are collected from the ship brokers and who are these uh, you know ship brokers baltic exchange cape size index panelist if you can see this is the uh, panelist which has be already been identified by the baltic exchange as the panelist who are going to give their uh, you know price uh, information to the exchange for calculation of your uh, cap size index. Now, let us take an example to see how this is calculated. It is a simple calculation, but uh, let us spend couple of minutes. So, if you can see this is the uh, Baltic exchange cap size index calculation. So, which uh, body calculates it uh, freight indexes and futures committee every exchange has a committee which uh, ha which responsibility is to identify the routes which routes will be part of the index and what are the weights associated with this uh, you know this route uh, routes so this fifc that is freight index uh, futures committee also identifies the panelist from whom it will collect data so, that also I have already shown and please note that these panelists are the brokers, C brokers, these are not the actual charterers or the uh, SIP owners. So, these panelists are the brokers who are aware of what is happening in the you know uh, underlying market, they have more information than a one particular uh, charterer or a uh, one SIPer. So, a charterer who is interested in only maybe you know interested in sending or uh, importing or exporting goods in a specific uh, route, they may be having information with respect to that particular uh, route. But a uh, index is calculated not only for a specific route, index is calculated for all routes. Uh, so, uh, or index is calculated by uh, taking uh, price information pertaining to all routes. So, that is the reason why Baltic exchange does not take any price information from the charterer uh, or the shippers. Now, how the exactly the index calculation? It is a simple calculation, uh, it is uh, you know you have P i. So, this is the freight rate for individual route, but for an individual route let us say you have out of 10 uh, panels. Uh, the exchange received quotation uh, information price information for uh, se from seven panels. So uh, this PI will then be nothing but the average rate given by the panels for a given route. So it is simple average. If a particular route out of ten panelists, the uh, exchange has received seven seven information uh, seven price information. So, uh, that is uh, going to be averaged out to identify the price associated with the uh, particular route. And similarly, if you you know if you remember uh, for a cape size uh, maybe around 15 routes are there. So, uh, there are it is mentioned 4 routes are mentioned here, it will be around 10, 12 routes are uh, uh, will be there. I have to just uh, you know if you see this uh, document, you will be able to identify how many routes are there. So, each route has a weight. So, this so what is going to be the index value? Index value is nothing uh, but the summation of P i into W i that is price of one route into weight of that route and summation of that and divided by index base value. So, this in uh, I 0 is nothing but your index base value. So, this is how exactly the 
uh, in a Baltic exchange calculates the index uh, for uh, all indices which uh, we just discussed. Now, Uh, the next question which uh, you may be thinking that how does uh, the FIFC that is uh, your threat index uh, futures committee uh, decides which routes to choose. So, it is again you know is the same uh, dilemma uh, when some uh, 5000 companies are listed in a company in a stock exchange and company uh, the exchange committee identifies as only 50 uh, companies to represent the index it is the same mechanism uh, through which uh, the uh, routes are identified so the routes are identified uh, with respect to geographical balance that means the chosen routes should not be concentrated on a specific uh, on in one geographical location it should be as widely dis uh, dispersed as possible and second uh, another very important criteria is the liquidity the chosen route should have a the chosen route should have a significant shipping activity so uh, when a index represent the broader underlying market then uh, the index uh, the route should have enough shipping activity otherwise that route should not be uh, incorporated into the index and the finally is the uh, standard preferred voice terms uh, so uh, it becomes you know if uh, if uh, the uh, root has a standard uh, preferred voice uh, term so all participants whenever they are quoting a price so the exchange knows that price is with respect to a particular standard uh, you know uh, specification otherwise if different uh, seed brokers are offering uh, different uh, rates or giving different rates with respect to different uh, you know shipping uh, um, conditions then probably that is not a proper way of calculation of the index so all these three factors goes into consideration for calculating calculating the index and the index calculation methodology we have already discussed uh, now let's go to uh, this is again I, I downloaded the data from the Bloomberg uh, database and uh, please see this one this is a Baltic index this is the uh, top one is a Baltic dry index and the red color uh, this thing is a Baltic dry index the blue one is a Bal Baltic dirty trunk uh, tanker index and the uh, brown is uh, brown color uh, line is your Baltic uh, okay there is a spelling mistake on my part this will be Baltic clean tanker index and if you can see uh, you know if you can see it this Baltic dry index which represents the global uh, you know trade in a significant way so that picked up during uh, 2000 uh, uh, during 2008 and it significantly dropped down and it is hovering at a uh, you know almost below uh, the index uh, index initiation value index started around 1000 in the year 1985 and it is quoting around uh, let me take you to the data yes if you can see this data this data shows you have on uh, on uh, that is 30th may 2008 uh, that is the it is a monthly data 30th may 2008 baltic dry index picked uh, it went up to 11,000 uh, 11, and as on the last date that is the 1st July 2007 2016 it is hovering around 677 and all of you know with the economic recession and economy going down not much of a activity is happening all over the world and um, uh, uh, it in fact uh, the Baltic uh, exchange is considered to be a precursor to the economic activity so lot of people keep note of what is how the Baltic exchange is moving if it is going up then they know that next quarter or uh, subsequent uh, two quarter later economy uh, you know the economic reports are going to be showing positive indication in terms of uh, 
the GDP growth rate, etc. So, it is a leading indicator uh, or uh, this indices are lindi leading indicator of the economic performance. Now, besides this, uh, you know, Baltic exchange, Shanghai, uh, Shanghai um, exchange also uh, calculates and reports uh, a, a containerized freight index and it the methodology is same, it uh, takes the spot rate of or the rates uh, uh, identified, uh, rates quoted by um, seed brokers uh, for 15 designated routes and these routes uh, which are in the cover C routes between Shanghai uh, Europe, Shanghai U US East and uh, West Coast and Shanghai to Asia and Shanghai to Africa and Shanghai to Australia. Basically all uh, you know trades which is uh, export import is happening between China and other part of the uh, world through container uh, you know seats this index represents that particular uh, market. Now, let us go to uh, our understanding on how uh, these uh, uh, forward indices are used for hedging freight rate uh, risk and what we are going to discuss is a OTC contract though futures and options are traded um, in the uh, you know CME, uh, but majority of uh, hedging happens in the OTC market that is the market which is associated with the uh, Baltic exchange. Now, let us take an example what exactly is a freight forward agreement. So, in case of a freight forward agreement, it is a hedging instrument in which charterers and shippers uh, enter into a contract for uh, entering into a contract uh, for a specified time charter uh, and voyage rates for forward position. So, uh, let me repeat. Uh, it is a derivative contract, it uh, provides a mean of hedging the exposure to freight uh, price, price risk through trading of specified time charter and voyage rates for forward position. So, what exactly happens that is let us say um, both parties uh, have some views with respect to whether charter uh, you know this freight rates are going to go up or go down. Uh, let us say a shipping company is fearing that the uh, say this uh, freight rates are going to go down and it can uh, enter into a forward contract uh, for mitigating uh, that risk and it fixes uh, the price at which it will be able to um, lease uh, or rent its seat through the uh, freight forward agreement. Similarly, let us say a charter, a charterer fear is that the price is going to go up if he does not do anything and uh, to mitigate that price risk associated with freight rate, it can enter into a forward contract uh, in which it will pay a fixed rate for every voyage or every series of voyage it will be it is interested to uh, you know undertake. Now, what will be the contract uh, terms? Uh, it will be the route, the settlement uh, date, the contract quality. Uh, who is going to be the fixed price payer and who is going to be the fixed uh, floating price payer. In fact, if you recall, it is nothing but a swap agreement. So, uh, it is basically some party will be selling the swap and some party will be buying the swap. So, this is the, uh, you know, this is uh, predominantly this happens in the OTC market. Now, let us take an example how this uh, how this uh, freight forward agreement works in real life. Now, let us say you have a charter, you have a charterer or uh, you know uh, let us say exporter of exporter of iron ore and what is the its fear? Its fear is freight rate is going to go up and uh, how it will be able to mitigate that risk it enters into a freight forward agreement it enters into a uh, 
agreement that is your FFA. So, uh, in that case uh, what the charterer will do? Uh, so, the charterer will be let me name it uh, him as a X. So, what is X fear? X fear is that he is going to pay a high rate or a floating rate when he uh, actually hires uh, or enters into a time chart enters into a boy charter or a contract of affrightment he has to pay a higher rate and uh, how he can mitigate this particular risk price risk uh, by entering into a freight forward contract he will be agreeing to pay the fixed rate and he will be receiving a floating rate and who is the counterparty let us say counterparty is we name him name the counterparty as C, CP and uh, X will pay fixed rate to the CP and CP will pay a floating rate and what which is the that floating rate? Floating rate is nothing but your underlying index may be let us say uh, that is your uh, your Baltic uh, dry index. So, if Baltic dry index value has gone up let us say and this index value has gone up and the charterer fear has come true he will be paying fixed rate to the counterparty and he will be receiving a uh, fixed uh, he will be receiving a floating rate which is the high higher uh, dry index value and simultaneously when he goes to the uh, to a shipper uh, for uh, you know for a time uh, for a um, contract of appointment or a uh, or a um, you know voyage he will be paying a higher rate so, this is an example of a freight forward agreement and in this case this this in this this is a swap contract and X by paying a fixed rate X is a buyer of X is buyer of FFA and CP is seller of And let us go to the we will take an, uh, another example where uh, the uh, the shipper is fearing that the freight rate is going to go down which is the case right now. In fact, uh, the shipping rate also is very very strongly related not only with the economic activity it is also related with the crude oil price. So, if crude oil price goes down the bunker cost goes down and the shipping uh, rate also accordingly goes down. So, and the shipping uh, uh, company is fearing that price is going to go down how he will be mitigating the risk let us say we were naming the uh, shipping company as a SC SC's fear is price price when I am using the word price it I am meaning it is a freight rate is going down so, how he will be mitigating this risk with respect to FFA? So, what is a SC? SC fear is it will be receiving less amount that is less uh, freight rate goes down. So, less freight rate will prevail and it will receive less freight amount uh, rate. So, how he will be able to mitigate this risk? So, it would be like it would be interested to. So, let us say we have a counterparty here. So, you will have a SC will be paying the floating rate. And SC will receive fixed rate. from the counterparty. So, let me repeat. So, SC's fear is that it is going to uh, receive less amount of freight rate if it does not do anything. 
now how he will be uh, how this company will be able to mitigate this risk it will enter into a for trade forward agreement for a some period of time to into the future maybe 6 month or 8 months depending upon the expectation so it will be receiving uh, the uh, it will be receiving fixed rate from the counterparty and it will be paying the floating rate so if his fear is true he will this company sc will pay less uh, rate to the counterparty and the counterparty will be paying a uh, you know will be paying a fixed rate to the uh, shipping corporation of india i'm sorry the, it will um, the counterparty will be paying uh, uh, a rate fixed rate to the uh, whoever is the shipping company so uh, this is an example where you have uh, your sc that is your shipping company is the seller of the FFA and the counterparty is the buyer of the as you remember you have a buyer is a party which pays the fixed so in this case CP is paying the fixed amount hence to the shipping company hence CP is the buyer of the FFA and SC is the seller of the FFA. And all this you know buying and selling of uh, FFA uh, is done through uh, OTC market, but this particular market is cleared at uh, I mean this all these transactions are uh, um, cleared at the exchange platform that is your Baltic stock Baltic exchange platform. So buyers uh, FFA buyers and FFA sellers will be giving their bid and ask quotations. Order matching will happen when order matching happens. The you know counterparties will take position and payment and res uh, receipt with respect to this uh, you know FFA contracts we are executed uh, through the. Uh, Baltic exchange uh, infrastructure. So, uh, with this I would like to end up uh, this session on, uh, on um, the freight uh, derivative. Also, I would like to add a couple of lines here in the sense that this freight futures are also available for trading at uh, CME and underlyings are uh, all underlyings are Baltic uh, exchange Baltic uh, indices. So, uh, the um, forward contracts uh, have uh, the on uh, sorry the futures contract have the underlying for different uh, in, uh, indices the Baltic indices which we discussed and uh, with this let me summarize what we discussed uh, with respect to uh, the um, uh, freight rate we discussed what are the you know uh, weight uh, the weight uh, cargo what is the difference between weight cargo and uh, dry cargo what are the different types of uh, you know cargo uh, seats and uh, depending upon the dead weight size depending upon whether they are carrying um, carrying uh, a dry cargo or liquid cargo and how um, uh, how your um, baltic exchange calculates different indices and based on these indices how freight forward agreements are undertaken by the shippers as well as the um, as well as the charterers to mitigate the freight uh, freight uh, price risk with this uh, i will be uh, proceeding with the uh, next uh, part of our discussion that is uh, a spot market for uh, our uh, water so this is also again another innovative uh, trading which is happening in exchanges so i'll just uh, you know in um, very briefly i will discuss how uh, what is the spot market for uh, water and how water trading is happening in in the uh, in the through exchanges uh, please uh, you know all of you may be knowing that um, uh, the water is going to be the next uh, major scarce resource uh, uh, for all of us considering the urbanization and uh, the you know amount of uh, per capita water consumption which is increasing day by day we are and in all of us we know that we are staring at a major water crisis uh, so 
now uh, in such certain exchanges water uh, contracts have started trading i will ju just give a case study with respect to uh, how water is being traded uh, at australia uh, you know some part of the australian um, uh, subcontinent uh, please note that during 1994 council of australian government made water as a tradable commodity by separating the ownership of the land with uh, and the ownership of the water so that means uh, if somebody is owning a piece of land and there is a water body there is a pond or there is a lake then the water is not owned by the person the water is water is uh, uh, water is owned by the government it is the government uh, ownership it is not water is not uh, privately owned so in that case uh, in with respect to this so uh, australian um, uh, you know the government the uh, council of australian government uh, created a uh, corporation called goldborn murray water corporation of victoria in it became a statutory body which was created by the australian government and uh, this uh, gm gmw managed the water trading issues in the state of victoria covering around 68000 square kilometer so all farms and all you know all um, animal uh, you know um, farms which were uh, rearing are animals and farms uh, uh, in who are into farming different uh, agri farm products they require their uh, uh, they require water and water is a major scarce commodity over there so what basically this uh, goldborn uh, murray water corporation did is that it gave some x amount of water freely available to each and every um, uh, uh, company which is operating let's say in that uh, within the 68000 uh, square kilometer you have five companies operating and depending upon this five companies business let's say let's say uh, this company had uh, so, sorry five companies are operating a b c d e and depending upon the availability of the water let's say um, you know 1000 uh, kiloliters uh, kiloliters of 600 700 kiloliters maybe 400 kiloliters and 500 kiloliters were freely distributed to these uh, five um, uh, free, you know they had the right to consume i should not say freely distribute they have a right to consume uh, this much of kiloliters of water depending upon their existing business uh, you know size so a uh, has the maximum amount 1000 kiloliter available to him now a can if a decides to uh, utilize less water in its day to day operation for running the business a can sell this water to the other four uh, parties so how do, uh, how a will be able to sell the water a goes to the exchange platform and a does a auction and a, a based on the auction whoever is the highest bidder whoever is willing to pay more money uh, that party uh, gets the right to use uh, the uh, amount of uh, water which has been sold by a now um, how it will be executed they uh, like a you know electric grid system all these water bodies are connected to a grid so a will release whatever the amount of water it agreed to sell it to the counterparties a will release that much of uh, water to the uh, grid and uh, uh, um, the counterparty will uh, extract that uh, whatever uh, amount of water it bought uh, from a that amount of water it will extract from the grid now uh, what is the risk associated with it suppose a has uh, underestimated its water requirement and a has already sold it to the counterparty and counterparty has already utilized that amount of money uh, that amount of water then a will be facing water scarcity and it, its business operation may taken uh, in a hit uh, and uh, and uh, 
suppose if rainfall uh, happens and uh, a, a did not a has sold it and if rainfall happens and everybody got um, you know a's water requirement uh, uh, is not high enough so a gains from this particular transaction and if rainfall does not happen and a has already sold it then uh, a may face the risk so um, how exactly this order matching is happened uh, please see this one this buyer and seller give their bid and order is matched by this uh, goldborn uh, water uh, authority and all buy and uh, sell bids uh, are collated and order uh, orders are matched and accordingly um, buyers uh, buy buyers consume more water and sellers get more money through this particular transaction of course there is no derivative contract futures contract that is not yet uh, started to be traded but i don't think uh, there is uh, much time left uh, sooner or later we will have some exchange where uh, you know the consumers bulk consumers of water and maybe uh, municipalities will be able to enter into forward contracts or future contract for uh, delivering water and consuming water at a later point of time and the price is decided uh, at a early stage like any forward or futures contract so with this i'd like to end up my discussion and uh, again uh, we will be continuing with the remaining part of the uh, discussion in the subsequent classes thanking all of you